it's finally here. And so far through my testing, I've been seeing some absolutely amazing performance out of this modular mini desktop PC. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the all new framework desktop. And this is one that I've been really excited about. I know a lot of people out there have been waiting on this thing. And if you're not familiar with framework, basically they create modular laptops. This is actually their first modular desktop PC. And out of the box, it's a DIY PC. You will have to assemble it but it's super simple. We'll go over the process. And by no means is this a low end mini PC because this is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, which means we're gonna be able to game at 1440 on this. We can run large language models. You can set this up, turn it into an entertainment hub if you want to. This thing has more than enough power for anything that you wanna throw at it. And right down on the bottom, this is uh, our modular side of everything. We've got two slots here so we can add different peripherals from framework. And if you head over to their website, this can be configured in many different ways. But what I've got here is an early review kit. So obviously we've got the framework desktop. We've got a fan, an SSD, handle for the case, our accessories box, a couple extra modules to test in those bottom slots. This does come with a nice little screwdriver, dual purpose, so you can spin this around. And this is the only thing you're going to need to assemble the framework desktop. Plus, we've got some customizability that we can do to the front of this using their tile system. So you can really make this mini PC your own. Like I mentioned, we've got that Max Plus 395 here, and I've tested that chip in other mini PCs, but I've never seen a cooler this big on this uh, setup here. What they've done looks really awesome. And of course you will have to assemble this, but it's super easy. There's only a couple things we need to install here. You'll have to install the fan. You can also install some modules up front and then you can customize the unit. I'm gonna go over everything here. It's actually a pretty quick process. 400 watt power supply is already installed, all plugged in. And what I'm seeing here is a really nice little setup. First thing I'm gonna be tackling here is the storage. And this utilizes a 2280 M.2 SSD. Uh, the heat sink is already pre-installed and it's got a little hinge on it. So you're not gonna lose this. You're not gonna lose the screw for that M.2. And I'm gonna be using a two terabyte Western Digital Black SN7100. And if you've already got an SSD, you don't have to buy it directly from framework. You can get the unit itself, then pick up your own fan, pick up your own SSD, if that's the way you wanna go. But uh, again, installation, really easy here. Just a 2280 M.2 SSD. Got that attached heat sink with the hinge on it. So just go ahead and put this in. Now that we've got storage taken care of, it's time to talk about the fan. And over on their website, they do offer three different fan choices. They do have an RGB version, but what I've got here is the Cooler Master version and the Noctua version. I'm gonna go with the Noctua, but uh, keep in mind, if you wanna go with the RGB, it would look pretty decent if you're into that, and it's fully controllable from the BIOS. And if you pick your fan up from Frameworks website, it does come with a nice little shroud. To make it easier to plug the fan in, we can remove the top with these two little thumb screws, and this is where a handle would go anyway. Once we get those out, we'll just slide it back, pop it off, and if you take a look on this side, there's two four pin fan connectors and we wanna to connect to the one labeled APU. This comes with all of the hardware we need to get this fan mounted up. So I'm just gonna kinda of tuck this cable in towards the top. We've got plenty of room in here for this. It'll slide right down on the four posts so it lines up perfectly. I'm gonna use the shroud that's included and we'll just put our four screws in. We'll swap the included screwdriver around and we'll snug these up. You don't have to put a lot of torque on these. It's not a car tire or anything like that. Just snug them up nice and neat. You'll be good to go. I just went ahead and plugged that fan in and we could actually boot the system up like it is right now, but I do want to install these modules down here. And I'm going to be going with the full size USB A port and USB type C up front look a little something like this and they're just gonna slide right into place. It's actually USB-C on one end of it. So we'll just go ahead and slot it in, make sure it's down, go with that other one. And this also has a locking mechanism. So we can just lock them right there in place. Couple more things here before we get into testing. We're gonna do a little bit of customization using their tile system up front. And they do sell a bunch of different tiles, but I'm sure people online will be 3D printing these. They've also got some blank tiles that you could customize yourself if you wanted to. They do sell custom tiles already over on the website. So they've got Linux, Framework, uh, AMD, Touch Grass, a few others. 
And of course, all of this customization is gonna come down to the end user. I've got a set of black, a set of white or silver, I'm not sure if it's white or silver, and a set of green here. I'm just gonna put them on here in no particular order. So I've got the front panel finished up and there's one last thing that I need to do here. They offer a couple different side panel choices. I've got the clear and it's made of acrylic. So we'll have to take the top off, slide it on there. Once it's all together, looks a little something like this. And I gotta say, it does look pretty good, but if I had to do one thing different here, I'd probably go with that black side panel because I'm not gonna be doing any RGB with this. And to tell you the truth, I don't need to see inside of this thing while it's running. But if you head over to their website, you can see that they've got the transparent and the black side panel. And when it comes to those tiles, they've got a bunch of different colors to choose from. So you can really go crazy with this thing. So I've got Windows 11 Pro installed. I've got all of the drivers ready to go. Been up and running for a little while now. Installed a bunch of stuff that we're gonna be testing. And as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. This has 128 gigabytes of RAM. I've dedicated 32 to the iGPU, running at 8,000 mega transfers per second. And the big thing here is with the Max Plus, it's running at a 256 bit bus. That's really what gives us a lot of performance over on that 8060 Si GPU. Now 32 gigs is more than enough for me right now with the way I've got this set up. But remember from the BIOS, you can do up to 96 gigs dedicated to the iGPU. Next thing I wanted to take a look at here was the TDP. And uh, I've been doing a little bit of testing with this. We've tested the Max Plus and mini PCs before. We've been able to take it up to like 80 watts safely. Sometimes 120, but it hits thermal throttle quite quickly. The cooler they have on this is really great for this chip. I've got a CPU-Z. We're gonna stress this out. So all 16 cores, 32 threads. Right down here, I've got hardware info running. It's got a boost up to 110, and then it kind of trickles on down and we're seeing a sustained around 100 watts. So 95 to 100 watts. But the most impressive thing here is the temps. So far, my maximum temperature throughout all of these was 75.9. And I've had this thing pegged out for quite some time at that 95 to 100 watt TDP. So with this setup, the way it is out of the box, I think we're gonna see some really good performance on the CPU and GPU side here. And with the power this thing's putting down and given the fact that we can dedicate up to 96 gigs to the iGPU, this thing does handle AI. And as an everyday desktop, it's gonna do everything that you want. I've got more videos coming, but in this one, I really wanted to run some benchmarks and see how it handles gaming. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And the first benchmark we have here is Geekbench 6. On the Max Plus 395 in the Framework desktop, we got a single core of 2,952, multi 21,976. And keep in mind, this is using the stock power curve. I haven't done any tweaking from the BIOS or installed a third-party app to try to up the wattage on this thing. We might be able to get a bit more out of this. But just to kind of give you an idea, uh, one of the best mobile chips right now for gaming is the Ryzen 9955HX 3D, 16 cores, 32 threads, all based on Zen 5, just like this chip here. Recently in a video I did on the new MSI Raider, we got a single core of 3,170 and a multi of 19,019. So this chip right now, the way it is, is beating it out in multi, coming a little behind in single core. The next one I ran here was Cinebench R24, single core 112, so it's coming behind that M1 Max. And again, I do think that we can get this up above it just a bit. I think we can hit around 118 with this with a little bit of tweaking, but multi is beating everything else on the list coming in with a 1,821. Checking out some iGPU performance with this 8060S. This is the Geekbench OpenCL benchmark. We scored a 98,034. And over on the right hand side, I just took a, a list from their browser. Near the top, we've got the new RTX 5060 laptop GPU. And that one's coming ahead just by a bit, but I mean, we're real close here with this iGPU, which is super impressive. And the final one we have here is 3D Mark Time Spy. With the way this was set up out of the box, we got a total score of 11,251, and our graphic score was 11,310. To give you an idea, recently took a look at a laptop with an RTX 4060, obviously it's a laptop GPU, and a Ryzen 9 7940HS. Over there, we scored an 11,238, and I actually didn't think we'd beat it with the uh, framework desktop, 
super impressive. But the most impressive thing here is, remember, we've only got a boost up to 110 watts in total. That's split up between the iGPU and the CPU here with this Max Plus 395. With the laptop I tested, it had to pull a total of 170 watts to get this kind of score because we've got a dedicated GPU, which will pull 90 watts all by itself, and that CPU will do up to 80 watts. So that's another really impressive thing here when it comes to efficiency. But now it's time to get into some real world gaming. And the first one we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1440p high settings with FSR set to balanced. Up in the top left hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. And you can see we're over 90 watts here in total. So again, it's the CPU and iGPU combined. The cooler here isn't making much noise at all. I actually thought we'd see much higher temps. And by the end, we'll take a look at average gaming temps with this setup. But right now we're at 1440p high with FSR set to balance. And by the end of this run, I saw an average of 73 FPS. Next game we have here is Spider-Man 2 1440p high with IGTI scaling set to balance. Personally, I do think it performs a little better with uh, AMD chips. You could go with FSR, you're gonna lose a few frames here and there, but overall, this is performing really well at high settings here, 1440p, and we're not using any frame generation. That's one thing I wanted to stay away from in this video. Now, personally, I don't mind using it at all. And with these same settings, if we were to enable FSR frame gen, we're gonna see an average of 130 FPS with this game. Marvel Rivals was another one that I wanted to test. 1440p, high, FSR, set to balance. When it comes down to it, I mean, I've done a lot of testing with, let's say, the RX 7600, the 8 gig model non-XP. This is performing on par. I do consider that card a 1440p high card or a 1080 Ultra. This has given us kind of the same performance here. And the most impressive thing here is these are integrated graphics. I wanted to put at least one fighting game in here, so we've got Mortal Kombat 1, 1440p high, and I only needed to take FSR to quality with this. I could probably go to very high settings with it, uh, the way it's performing right now. And seeing that, it's hardly maxing out the GPU and CPU, but we're at a steady 60 with this game, and it does look great. You knew it was coming, Forza Horizon 5, my favorite arcade racer, 1440p, extreme, no FSR, no fidelity cast, we don't need any kind of scaling with this, we're seeing averages over 100 FPS, and I'll tell you, at Ultra 4K, we can average 78 FPS with this chip. I also wanted to try out Fortnite, 1440p, epic, and I was kind of hoping that we'd be able to lock this down at 120. Maybe adding a little bit of XESS from the settings would help out, but we're at 100% resolution scale. I mean, even dropping it down to 80% may net us that steady 120 out of this game. I personally don't play this game, and if I got into battle, it may change a bit. It's just as soon as I get into battle, I know I'm gonna get destroyed and there's no point in even trying. And the final game we have is Borderlands 3, 1440p Ultra. There's one more setting above this, and there's a chance we could run this at 60 with that setting, but I usually just go to Ultra with it. And we've still got some stutters here and there when uh, shaders are caching or particle effects are on screen. It's not horrible, and the more you play, the more it clears up with this game. But I do think that this is a really playable experience, and locking it down at 60 is just going to clear all of that up. Another thing I always like to monitor with these mini PCs are CPU temps, in this case, APU temps, plus total power consumption from the wall. I use a kilowatt meter while this thing is running just to get an idea of how much power it's pulling directly from the wall. And going into this, I wasn't sure what to think about the temps. I mean, we've got a very small form factor unit here, but the cooler they designed for this is very efficient. And with that fan installed, it doesn't spin up and sound like a jet engine, even at those higher TDPs. Average 1440p gaming temps were only 64 degrees Celsius, and the maximum recorded through all of my testing was 83 degrees Celsius, and I believe we hit that while running Cinebench R24. It's a test that maxes out all 16 cores, 32 threads for 10 minutes straight. As for total system power consumption, remember this is from the wall, total that this many PCs pull in. Idle, around 9 watts. 4K video playback, up to 13 watts. 
average 1440p gaming, 127 watts from the wall, and the maximum I could get this to hit while maxing out all 16 cores, 32 threads, and that 8060 Si GPU was 153 watts. This is an extreme use case scenario. 99.9% .9 of the time, this will never hit that kind of wattage. So first impressions here for the framework desktop, I love the overall design. It does make you feel like you're building a mini PC when all actuality you're just installing the fan, your storage, and then putting the side panels on. You really don't get down to the nitty gritty, but you know, for most people out there who haven't built a PC before, it'll definitely make you feel like you've put something together, make you feel like you've accomplished something. A little bit of customization up front with their tile system, and I'm sure you could 3D print these. You could definitely go through and paint these if you don't like the ones you have. You can really kind of make it your own. But the biggest thing I like here is the overall performance. With that Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 running at up to 110 watts, and I do think we can get more out of it, this is an absolutely amazing performing mini PC, given that we've only got an iGPU here. I will have several more videos coming in the next few days, so keep an eye out on the channel. Uh, first up, we definitely want to test out some Linux gaming, so I'm going to go with hopefully SteamOS. If not, we'll install Bazi. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get it to load up with the uh, driver they have right now for official SteamOS. But if there's anything else you want to see running on the framework desktop, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links to their official website in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.